Dinosaurs. They captivate our imagination. That once upon a time, prehistoric creatures roamed the planet, spanning millions and millions of years ago. And the legacy of these ancient creatures still live on today with fossils and birds. And their popularity remains pretty stable in pop culture when you consider all the movies and documentaries that have been made. One documentary that I think you're all familiar with is Walking with Dinosaurs or made in 1999, it's probably the greatest piece of dinosaur media ever created, blending CGI with practical effects that honestly still holds up pretty well by today's standards, showing the basic life of a dinosaur. And it was pretty successful to get a bunch of different sequels and a spin-off and a prequel and a terrible movie and... Whatever this is supposed to be. Prehistoric Planet. Something I wouldn't even blame you if you never heard of it in your life because I think I was the only person who ever owned the DVD. So what is it? Well, it's basically walking with dinosaurs uh, for kids, uh, with, with a big asterisk on the kids part. So to give a little history, there was a network called the Discovery Kids Network. It was basically a discovery channel, but for kids. I, that, that's a pretty plus poor explanation. Look, most of this is kind of just going off of memory because the channel isn't exactly around anymore, or at least I couldn't find it anywhere. It actually transformed into the Hub Network, a name I'm sure most of you are familiar with, or at the very least, know about it more than Discovery Kids. And like its father channel, Discovery, it had its own stitch of entertainment. I, I don't exactly remember most of them. I, I remember there being a drama about a plane crashing on an island, you know, where a bunch of teens were stranded on said island. Flight 29 down, I remember enjoying it, though I bet you it probably wasn't that good. And Dino Sapien, being another drama about... What the f- but no, for a kid's show, the CGI isn't actually the worst I've seen. But no, when I watched this, I was mainly watching it for Prehistoric Planet. Unlike most people who were probably introduced with Walking with Dinosaurs through the UK version or the American version, I was introduced with the watered down version. It was... That, that, man, that was five or six years old when I first watched that. Oh my god, I am so old. But can, can we take a minute and look at this box art for a second though? Because, uh... Oh my god, look at this box art. There's a weird looking allosaur, I think. I guess it's just the angle is meant to be dynamic. Uh, they're literally using the same prehistoric reptile picture and copying and pasting on the same cover. And, and then there's just this Utah raptor. And that Utah raptor just looks like he's in a perpetual state of screaming. Oh, hello there, Utah. Fine day it is today. <laughs> So what's the difference between Prehistoric Planet and Walking with Dinosaurs? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not much. I mean, I, look, uh, it's... Like, here's the deal. There's no difference with the animation, unless you count adding this weird Pangea part, because I wasn't in the original. The editing is definitely different, and they have a new narrator, and that is about it. The editing is also probably a consequence of the fact that Prehistoric Planet has a 22 minute runtime for each episode compared to the 30 minute runtime of Walking with Dinosaurs. Because I guess they just had to get that sweet, sweet kids ad money. Haha. <laughs> There's also been some scenes that have been cut out from the original too. Like, you know, I'm sure that's meant to accommodate the 22 minute time limit, but also because they removed some of the more gruesome scenes uh, from Walking with Dinosaurs. Gonna, gonna slide this asterisk back over that. Like, they decided to cut this decal decapitation scene from the spirits of the ice forest, or the inside of the Siguanodont. Okay, sure, but there's still quite a lot of bit of blood. Dinosaurs screaming in pain and wounds and- An egg-laying elevator, a long tube deposits the eggs in the trench she has dug. Egg birth? Ugh. It, it just- it just seems inconsistent. It wouldn't be funny if I just did this. Woo woo woo! What does seem to be- Woo 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 woo! What does seem to be- Woo 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 woo! What? Don't you fucking dare. What does seem to be pretty different is the structure of the story. The editing, the narrator, whom is being narrated by Ben Stiller instead of Kenneth Bragnack. I'm sure I didn't pronunciate that good in the slightest. Right, so Ben Stiller, he's not bad. You know, he's... He's not bad. Ben Stiller, I feel he does a decent job in narrating. However, that's only one part of the equation. An actor can only go so far with a bad script. And man, is this script. So it does a decent job at explaining what's going on. Sure, does the bare minimum, but for some reason, I guess because they thought kids had a low attention span or something, they decided to fill it with jokes and sarcasm uh, to a point where it's both distracting and very cringy. These slow-moving reptiles look to the ground. 
and pray no one dropped a mirror. Not attractive. Jesus Christ. And the sad part is that there's actually some genuinely great script moments littered throughout. You know, honestly, some parts I think it's even better than the original. The, mainly the one I'm talking about is the giant of the skies at the end. But this is one of the most important parts of evolution. The constant turnover of generation after generation allows a species to adapt and evolve along with the changing world around them. This cycle of birth, life, and death is what makes the wonder of evolution possible. The truth is, our hero is now traveling the final stretch of a journey that has been a huge success. Ornithochiris has wandered the prehistoric world for 40 years. He's flown tens of thousands of miles and fathered countless young. Now he's flown full circle. He can finish his life on the same beach where he was born. Even in death, he has something to offer his species. Nourishment for the next generation. He'll also leave something to the modern world. The sands of time will turn his bones into fossils. And those fossils will tell the story of this truly awesome creature. Here in the Cretaceous period, the Ornithochiris will continue to soar above all other pterosaurs the only flying reptile worthy of the name King of the Sky. Like, damn, that's just so good. But that's just few and far between, especially since there isn't any more quiet moments like you got in the original. But again, I'm sure that's a consequence of the 22 minute time limit. Can you tell that I do not like the time limit? Because mainly the pacing is just kind of fast and I argue, it's a bit too fast. It makes it kind of hard to actually go back and watch it, but you know, as a kid, I guess I didn't really notice it because, who looks shiny dinosaur? But something that I think adds to the faster pacing is the editing. There's a lot of cuts and transitions where the screen flashes and it's accompanied by lightning sound. I guess it got struck by lightning, I guess. But there's just too many cuts and the stories from the original episodes are flipped around plot-wise for some reason and certain things are getting cut and it's just, it's just too fast. But the show isn't just trying to mindlessly show dinosaurs. It does seem to be trying to teach you about dinosaurs, mainly with these cards that flash up on the screen. And that's basically it on Prehistoric Planet. Did you know that you can barely find any information online when you look up on prehistoric planet on Google yeah kind of scraping at the bottom of the barrel for this one but because of there's no information that I can find there's not much to really say it's just a watered down walking with dinosaurs I mean, like I said the only things they added was the Pangea part and God just fucking chucking a goddamn rock on the earth and if I had to compare the two yeah of course walking with dinosaurs is clearly better better pacing better script though the funny thing is you know the walking with dinosaurs has its sequel series walking with beast well prehistoric planet also had that too but it's still called prehistoric planet because it was a season two thing look i don't make the rules instead of ben stiller because i guess he had other things to do they had christian slater who i remember liking more as a narrator maybe it was just his voice or a better script and he's gone on to do other dinosaurs documentaries but that also has the same problems as prehistoric planet hunting for your own family is a major pain how could they run off like that Unfortunately, the season two of Prehistoric Planet never got released on home video or DVD, and I can literally not find any footage of it whatsoever other than the season two opening on YouTube. I know it exists, all right? I saw a Parasiotheum give live birth as Christian Slater talked in the background, all right? Now, the Prehistoric Planet DVD has some nice features. Well, firstly, I think it's the only damn DVD that has like two main menus because what the hell is a main menu if there's not two of them? And then, What the fuck? But the special features include some a little neat things, I suppose. Well, for one thing, you'll be able to see more of those cards. Well, more accurately, they expand on the knowledge that they were talking about. It's it's pretty neat. It also shows the pronunciation of certain dinosaurs, in case you don't know. My favorite is being is Allosaurus! 
Love that guy. As well as a 3D picture viewer. Because this DVD came with 3D glasses. And there is nothing special about it. You can't watch things in 3D. You just pictures of dinosaurs in pre <laughs> Its face. <laughs> there. I, I didn't see you there. Would you like some Captain Crunch cereal? Finally, it showed off a special short movie promo for Blue. Yeah, I suppose this was meant to be a documentary as well. Yeah, you know, basically just advertisement. Just a bunch of kids talking about the fish they see. Riveting. That looks like my mom. Holy shit, girl. Calm down. You need some therapy. And that's basically it in a nutshell. I think I covered a decent amount of this little adaptation that I'm sure most haven't heard about. I'm sure that's probably the reason why there's not a season two DVD release. This must have been so bad. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, while it pales in comparison to the original Walking With Dinosaurs version, I do have some pretty strong nostalgia towards it. I mean, hell, it was the main reason why I discovered Walking With Dinosaurs many years later, and it probably wasn't even related, but it was the first animation of dinosaurs that I saw, and I remember being super wowed by it, and it, it's fine. It's it's harmless. It's not doing anything super bad. The 22 minute time limit sucks. The narration can be pretty bad at times. Not Ben Stiller's fault, of course. He does a fine job. I do genuinely mean that. But it's harmless. It's seven bucks. But even then, the only reason why you would ever see this on your own is just out of sheer curiosity. You're not missing literally anything. But yeah, that's pretty good. I'm glad I was able to finally share this knowledge on YouTube. Before Billiam got to it first. Yeah, I saw that Fly 29 Down video. Yeah, I know what you were up to. I was a 2000 in kids too. You don't know who I am, but I know who you are. And you are a pretty talented man. Keep doing the good work. God, I'm so lonely.